Hello and welcome to my little workshop, or I should say tiny workshop. Today I'm going to be talking about building the Barrett Steam Models Gauge 1 47 Double X 2AO Goods and uh, it's the coal fired version. Today this is part one I'm going to be talking about the tender I'm making. If you're wondering what the um, 47 goods look, look, looks like there's a full size one there unfortunately none of them were saved although there is work in progress to build a replica some of the parts coming from X Barry uh, locomotives so that would be something to look forward to Right, that's that. Here's the um, some of the instructions for the for the kit. There, there's a picture of a completed model. The kit comes with much brass um, components that has to be formed. There's um, part of a sheet there I've cut the rest out but that's how the most of the parts come like that the only thing that is complete really is the boiler I haven't got that to hand at the moment but I've got it here um, so far this is how far I've got with the tender the first thing to do was when it was one complete etch sheet was to emboss all the rivets. A friend of mine kindly loaned me a rivet tool to do that. I haven't counted how many is there but it's just hundreds of rivets all the way around as you can see there and there. It's uh, now a feature of the 4000 gallon tender is this rave. You can see it there. Let's probably see it more clearly. End on view like that. Now the difficulty is is that has to be formed. The first part was is to form the 90 degree angle at the top here and then by using that small measurement of metal there at the top was clamped down hard and the rest of the sheet was pushed over a jig that I made. I will come to that in a moment. So this is how far I've got with it. Um, it's I've soldered it all the way round. Got good penetration between the sole plate and the tender sides, as you can see there. And one thing I done was is to hold back. I didn't want the solder flying out, out the sides um, when I was soldering it, obviously. And especially when I had it upside down, I didn't want all solder going over the sides and over the rivets because you won't get it off. So what I done was is I actually put Tamiya, got it to hand here somewhere. Tamiya masking tape comes in a little roll like that, little um, about ten mil wide. To me, a masking tape along the uh, the seam there, so as I was soldering it, the solder couldn't go anywhere. It couldn't run over the sides, and I was quite pleased with that. And I mean, the, the tape got quite badly burnt and so on, and I had water to hand just in case. But I wasn't worried about that. What I was worried about was, as like I say, is ruining the sides. So that came out very well, and like I say, is. I don't know if you see it in the camera, but there's quite good penetration all the way around because this is going to be a water tank effectively, so it has to be sealed. So that the uh, pump goes in underneath here that I've already made, and there's a hole there for a bypass, and that's just a a dummy coal chute there, soldered all the way around. Any excess solder I should clean off be, uh, before painting, but I'm only halfway through the tender really. 
there's still a long way to go. So that's that. This is the pump that I've made. Put you have to put that together as well. Bypass on top there. Right, next clip will be is how I formed that rave at the top because a few people have asked me how I've done that in the gauge one circle so I shall get the uh, the jig out next and try a bit of scrap brass in there. Right, now this is the most complicated jig that I had to make out of the two. Now this is again angle iron now and clamped down with wing nuts underneath come to that in a minute and there on this right just I'm trying to do this and look in the camera screen at the same time this um, quarter inch bar is what he used to form the rave over with there okay now what I've done was is I've got a one eighth ply there and there's one eighth ply on this side as well the quarter inch bar was glued down I used Araldite to glue the bar down between the two pieces of one eighth ply so only one eighth end of the bar is sticking up proud as per the manufacturer's instructions okay so then that what I was saying about that small edge at the top only about half an inch or so that was clamped underneath here really down tight so then effectively then the whole sheet of the tender body the side was pushed over the brass bar um, the secret is as I've, I've been told by a few friends is you must get that down tight first attempt I didn't clamp it down tight enough and the side just you know pulled out because the metal is fighting against you basically so it must be clamped down tight so I'm going to do a demo next to show you how I actually done it right I've got the uh, the jig in the vice nice and firm found a bit of old scrap brass here and it's about roughly about the same height as a tender there so you can imagine that that 90 degree fold at the top is this part here that I've already done this is the first fold that you do as per the manufacturer's instructions so that was done first the angle iron I've loosened off you notice that with this bar here, I can't remember if I used brass or steel, but anyway, whatever it was, I've put insulating tape over it there, and there's insulating tape over this side as well. Now, what that does is that helps to protect the rivets because the rivets are already been embossed on the tender because you have to do it while the sheet is flat, and you don't want to ruin all these embossed rivets. So what I've done was, is to help protect the rivets, I mean it's wood anyway, so the rivet heads would probably penetrate the surface of the wood, so there's nothing really to worry about. But you can't use a metal table, because if you clamp it down on a metal table, you will end up then pushing the rivets in that you've already done. So it's got to be, you know, a hard surface, i.e. wood, but not too hard. But what I've done is, as I say, I've put insulating tape over this side on top of the 1 8 ply and I put a layer of insulating tape where the brass is proud the, the, the rod I should say where it's proud 
again to help protect the rivets because the rivets go up as far as that top of that rave there you see so you don't want to damage all those lovely rivets that you've done right next thing we'll do is, is get the what we say tender side put that slide it into the angle like that that's and it, and then you you screw it down making sure the the other important thing is is this tender side has got to be hard against this rod it can't be like the angle can't be out here somewhere it has to be tight up against it because you want maximum pressure on that little piece of metal that you're, you're clamping down so next thing is is to tighten the wing nuts up nice and tight Right, they're all nice and tight now, and that ain't going to move. So, what you got to do now is you imagine this is a long sheet on here because this is all this, all the way round, and all here before I formed it. So, you, I've only got a tiny workshop, so I only made this jig to do one side at a time, and plus, it's very hard to push over anyway. Right, the thing is as well, what you need to make sure is, is that when this is bent over, that you want it to bend over right at, right at the top. One thing you don't want to do is, is bend it halfway across the tender side. It'll look terrible and then you, you probably finish the sheet. So it has to be done at the top here. Okay, and not saying this part here is a bit that's clamped down in that under that angle iron. Right, so to make sure that it's pushed right over hard over that bar and not curved in the middle, the manufacturers tell you to shove it over with a piece of wood. But the problem is, is you can't get the piece of wood right down to the bottom when the metal is upright. So, what I've done was I found this piece of old Dexian here and it's got a nice curve that's gentle on your hands. So I turned it round that way. Put the Dexian in there. Push it down as hard as you can. And then gently push over the, the sheet like that. When I got it to about that, about 45 degrees, took that off, then you can get the wood down there and then push the rest of it over with the wood, like that. There you go. There's the rave. Not as good as I've done on the tender side, but it gives you some sort of idea there.
what can be achieved and that is a nice nice curve on that nice rave on that so there you go if you are building one of these hope you have good success with it and I hope you found all this useful this is not instructions by the way on how to do this this is my own interpretation of doing the work no doubt a lot of experienced engineers out there can do a far better job than me but it um, gives you some sort of idea what you can do Here's the chick again. Close up there of the rod, right next to that. So it's got to be when you've got that metal in there, it's got to be right up tight against that rod. And this really clamped down hard. I did find. Here's the uh, close up of the jig again. You can see there the rod half sticking out from the 1 8 ply at each side there. And the angle, like I say, must be tight against that tender side when it's clamped down really hard. That is the secret, getting that down clamped hard. And I did find, this is what I practice on first, this is from the, the um, edge of one of the brass etched sheets. This piece of scrap and I formed it as a practice run first. That's the best thing to do is, is really on on the sides and at the ends is like all these things is to practice with some scrap metal first make sure you get it 100% before you attempt it on the actual kit because you really only have one chance with this right so that's what I messed about with at the beginning And that's the, like I say, that's how I form the tender end. Like that. The piece of ply between the two was arrow, arrow dotted in, not as wide as the brass rods. And I cut a groove in each end of the ply so it couldn't push out. Arrow dotted in, the brass rods was arrow dotted into the wood base. And um, and not like say and clamped. I, I have these big plastic woodworking clamps you can get from the DIY stores. And as I say, I clamped it with a couple of clamps there over onto the metal the other side. But what I've done was, as I said, to protect the rivets on this side because the rivets rivets was proud on this side. Was I put a piece of scrap wood over the rivets to protect them. That's about it. So, uh, as I say, I must emphasise that this is not instructions for how to do it. This is the way I done it, and no doubt a lot of you would do it a better way than what I can. But for me, it worked perfectly okay. As far as the tender goes, I'm about halfway through now. So, you know, there's a uh, still quite a bit of work to do what I should do next I'm not sure probably got to, you've got little fillets to put in those corners there fill the gaps so I should probably do that next and then start adding the detail and then the um, the frames um, will have to be formed to go underneath with the wheels it's all included in the in the pack 
So, so far, it uh, hasn't been easy, but interesting at the same time, if that makes any sense. All the best.